Welcome, this is Dr. Tom Rafai, and we are going to be talking more on semaglutide, okay? Personal and professional experience. Of course, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and also to share this video as you see fit and as the spirit moves you. So my background is in internal medicine, as well as a very extensive history in multidisciplinary care, metabolic health, and weight management. Uh, I have run and built multidisciplinary care programs for metabolic health and weight management from the large Beaumont uh, Health System, now known as Corwell, uh, in the north to the Pritikin Longevity Center in Miami, and then back up to the Henry Ford Health System in Detroit. And also in terms of uh, coaching, not just uh, medical patients, but coaching, and then my own personal history of binge eating disorder and the uh, loss of my youngest brother, sadly, Basil, God rest his soul, uh, to binge eating disorder and fat shaming gives me a combined personal and professional perspective that I hope you find is interesting. Now, I've spent six weeks on semaglutide prior to taking uh, a two-week hiatus. At this point, now I'm reporting this interim for you on the uh, overall personal experience. This is more about my personal experience, but I will provide some professional thoughts right out of the gate because one of the hot topics is semaglutide and pregnancy, largely unintended pregnancy, and the risk uh, to uh, young babies growing uh, in mom while uh, she is on semaglutide and the risks, which would be uh, definitely a significant issue because if nothing else, when you're under a substantial calorie deficit and make no mistake, that's how semaglutide works as well as its cousin, uh, terzepatide, uh, semaglutide, remember, coming in three forms, really, uh, two brand name from Novo Nordisk, uh, at, which are um, Wegovi and Ozempic, and then the third being the compounded the pharmacy options available because the drug is under such shortage that the FDA does allow compounding pharmacies to provide such under uh, circumstances of major shortage. And then the terzepatide, uh, which is known as Munjaro. Uh, no financial relationship with either of these companies, by the way, uh, which I believe is Eli Lilly. Now, these uh, these uh, drugs definitely drive appetite down, drive calorie intake way down. That is the mechanism by which uh, they cause body weight reduction and largely body fat. But we're going to talk about my concerns regarding uh, muscle loss uh, in the uh, process, because that's always the case when it comes down to weight reduction. Now, nobody, I mean, there's very little data that people can be in a catabolic state losing tissue, in other words, for body fat while gaining muscle. That is a very uh, overrated uh, a myth, uh, largely a myth. I mean, there's under extreme circumstances of very heavy resistance training and adequate protein intake uh, with uh, such tortuous levels of training that the subjects didn't want to even be part of the study and they were all very young. Uh, have I seen the combination of building muscle while losing fat? That doesn't mean you can't improve the quality of muscle. Uh, while losing body fat and maybe some um, uh, of the microarchitectural and physiological aspects of quality of muscle, but quantity of muscle, uh, just really largely in, in most uh, typical circumstances does not build while you're losing body fat. What you like to do is prevent the loss, any unnecessary loss uh, as much as possible of muscle mass in the process. But when you are under a calorie deficit that is not favorable, typically to a fetus, there's some degree, of course, if uh, there's significant amounts of nausea, morning sickness, uh, we do know that under uh, modest uh, levels of calorie uh, reduction that a fetus, you know, in a sense, will be prioritized by mom and, and survive. But when it comes down to large numbers uh, and the very young, uh, in this case, uh, fetuses, because it would be presumably an unintentional pregnancy under significant uh, calorie reduction. And that calorie reduction may actually, in many cases, in the beginning, improve fertility because many women may have infertility associated with insulin resistance or polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, and then improve fertility momentarily. But then while those first, let's say, two months of gestation, uh, they are really ranking calories down and losing weight, not favorable for a fetus, not favorable for development. Definitely the drug should not be used in any way, shape or form where there's a potential pregnancy and all kinds of warnings and more discussion regarding that should be the case. So that's one thing. Uh, from my personal perspective, uh, before I go uh, back into some potentially uh, more general growing from my personal perspective regarding uh, the muscle loss and the really re 
incredible appetite reduction. And as a binge eater, impulsive eating, uh, which I've learned to largely control due to the lifestyle system that I have developed. Uh, the Flex 5 lifestyle is well known. It's been run through clinically through clinical programs at uh, Henry Ford. It was part of the model of my Harvard Lifestyle Online Medicine course called Nutrition and the Metabolic Syndrome. Uh, the Flex 5 lifestyle are based on five keys to optimal wellness and skills and knowledge in one, psychology, two, nutrition, three, physical activity, four, understanding of environments, food, physical, social, and then five, accountability. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, the addition of uh, the semaglutide to the picture made it almost scaringly easy to not be tempted by uh, uh, what I have coined crap foods. Now, crap, uh, its original coinage was Jeff Novick, uh, calorie rich and process, C-R-R-A-H-P. But I have uh, evolved uh, to understand it a little bit further with other professionals that believe the refinement uh, and of the food and uh, uh, highly processed, it being most uh, significant, that the acronym has been modified to C-R-R. AHP. So calorie rich, refined, and highly processed. C R R A H P. Still sounds like crap, but not the crap you were thinking of. Uh, just a an acronym to describe foods that are of highest risk and most addictive in nature. And semaglutide definitely helps reduce the uh, impulse uh, I experienced, um, impulsive eating reductions substantially. But to a point it was almost scary. I mean, the, the kind of calorie reduction we're talking about, I was probably taking in only 1200 calories a day and fully satiated and to the point where I almost had to, I felt compelled to eat some very calorie dense food just to make sure I had enough calories in me to prevent what I was concerned about, which was some muscle loss. There was no way I was going to keep up the same level of physical activity on the calorie reduction uh, that I was on. And in fact, to be honest, most of the time, what we have seen clinically is that when people really try to rev up a weight loss with exercise, which is great for weight maintenance, physical activity and weight maintenance is a different segment of the journey. Let's call it, you know, empire strikes back or whatever. We're, we're still talking about weight loss, which is stage one. That's like Star Wars, then empire strikes back, then return of the Jedi. If these Star Wars analogies uh, work for you, uh, you have to put things in proper order and nutrition and calorie deficit is king when it comes to weight loss. So let's just focus in on that. And the concern regarding uh, uh, muscle loss, it's hard to balance because you want some degree of physical activity, but if you have a significant amount of physical activity, it would rev up appetite. Now on semaglutide, that may not be the case, but the calorie deficit was so low, there just really wasn't energy to do anything beyond just maintenance. And at best, at best, because I will say that one of the reasons I wanted to come off after the six weeks was uh, had enough, dropped down from about my, um, which may not sound like a lot to you, but I'm a metabolic mess at five, six and a half when I get close to 170. And I was around 166, 170. Uh, the semaglutide over six weeks, I was down to 152. And I will say uh, also, by the way, for me, not for you, could be different, but really uh, reduced my thirst as well, which was an issue I had to really focus on uh, staying well hydrated. And now after uh, now I'm in my third week off, but nevertheless, plateauing around 156, 156 and a half. So, you know, 10 pounds of the original loss is, is maintained. And, and I'm thinking about maybe going on another um, cycle, if you will. I like the idea of intermittent use so far. I don't necessarily believe it has to be a commitment to long-term use, but only because of this. In the programs I have run and the way that I would run my own lifestyle, the primary engine for driving metabolic health, including weight management, is lifestyle. The skills and knowledge in the five key areas, psychology, mindset, mindfulness, mental health, nutrition. There are five transcendent principles there. The ones that are most driven regarding weight loss being uh, calorie density, the calories per bite of food, on protein and fiber. And then, of course, physical activity, but that has different roles. We just discussed uh, environments, your food, your social, your physical environment, skills and knowledge to leverage those to your benefit so that uh, it's kind of mindlessly easier to, to stay healthy rather than always using willpower. And then fifthly, some degree of accountability. And for me, even just connecting with you, uh, let alone just you know using the lowest levels of accountability, tracking my steps or occasionally tracking food, 
Uh, but for most people, it would be engaging in a program, whether it be group or one-on-one, -on -one, or even if really engaged well with some technology, that can be self-reflective accountability. Those are the five keys. Those are the, the components of the engine of metabolic health. Turbochargers, if you will, like GLP-1 drugs and so forth, or metformin and phentermine uh, with uh, other uh, uh, combinations of FDA-approved medications, may be adjunctive, but they should be as an accent to learning the methodology of long-term health and well-being and longevity, uh, not the engine, because without learning the skills and knowledge of lifestyle, at least concomitantly uh, with any form of supplement, uh, particularly these type of pharmaceutical drugs, you're really not gonna get, in my opinion, the long-term legacy effect that we have seen clinically. Even with bariatric surgery, the surgery should be looked at as a tool to kickstart, not as an alternative to therapeutic lifestyle change. So my main concerns about the, the use in pregnancy I've discussed, uh, concerns regarding staying on it chronically, and I was only at the uh, 0.25 milligrams. When I went up to 0.5 milligrams of the semaglutide, which otherwise may be in the form of Ozempic or Wagobi, I had way too much appetite reduction. For me, it was, um, uh, and I think I've discussed this in the previous video already, but just to repeat, uh, it, was, it wasn't a classic nausea. It was uh, more like butterflies in the stomach. Like, you know, when you're nervous about something, but there's, in this case, nothing to be nervous about. You just feel like you have these butterflies in the stomach. Not uncomfortable enough to want to stop it or be willing to use it short term, but not something I was willing to tolerate long term. And there's also the slowing of digestion, which is one of the mechanisms by which the semaglutide and, and the GLP-1 group in general uh, help you uh, feel full, led to some constipation. So, you know, extensive background, been prescribing GLP-1 drugs as an adjunct to lifestyle since 2006 when the first one came out, exenatide, which is known then as Bieta, twice a day, very inconvenient, all the way through uh, Laraglutide, which is the once a day, uh, otherwise known as Vic Victoza or Saxenda, also made by the same company that makes semaglutide, Novo Nordisk. Again, no financial relationships at all, uh, just for full disclosure. And now also my own personal experience. So my summary to you would be, please make sure that if you're going to use this drug or any drug is associated with uh, a metabolic health goal, wrap it around a method and, and a support system for long-term lifestyle change. And think of it not necessarily as a long-term. It may be that you use it for years. I mean, the, the trials that were published basically two years, I don't think that gives us anything more than a medium-term look. Um, Many doctors say that this is a lifetime drug. Well, we don't have any lifetime data on these drugs. Uh, I would argue that it would be possible to use them intermittently with close monitoring, and then they uh, certainly can get right back on if, the, if things start to really unravel. Uh, but at the very least, if you use it for six weeks, six months, whatever the case may be, try to focus in on the lifestyle uh, component of it. You're not obliged, obviously, but if you want to really learn, there's a 14-hour uh, library uh, really teaches uh, methodologically and step-by-step step what I think are the five most important uh, principles uh, and key areas of lifestyle, the Flex 5. And the Flex 5 lifestyle, you can just you know, Google the Flex 5 lifestyle and you'll see the information page if you want to take the, uh, uh, the online course. Or you could just put in DPM, it's uh, short for Disease Prevention masterclass or diabetes prevention masterclass, if you like, but dpm.drtomrefai.com. That's D-R-T-O-M-R-I-F-A-I.com. And I'll repeat again, web link, dpm.drtomrefai, D-R-T-O-M-R-I-F-A-I.com. And there's an option for you there. Uh, it's, there's a cost to it. It's uh, uh, fully disclosed. And there's an entire curriculum. You can drop down to the bottom of that page and see all of the different uh, modules and lessons and feel free to learn that route or by whatever route, whatever coaching uh, and uh, hopefully really high quality support you have uh, for uh, learning uh, transformational or therapeutic lifestyle change. That should be the engine. These drugs would be the adjunct. And I hope that this was helpful in terms of my uh, experience. And the only other thing I guess I would add at the um, uh, at this point is because there's many people that might come uh, to discussing these drugs with your licensed healthcare provider that may be on metformin. 
Uh, metformin is a double-edged sword in the sense that it tends to be, if anything, uh, helpful in terms of constipation. I mean, if anything, it might lead more towards loose stools, which could combat, you would think, the constipating uh, tendencies of semaglutide. But they both are going to overlap in terms of the potential side effect of aggravating nausea. So I personally prefer metformin more as a bridge during the times uh, of taking a hiatus. Not that you have to, but when taking a hiatus from semaglutide to uh, get back onto the metformin, that to allow some room for your body to breathe in terms of the nausea side effect to um, potentially take a break from, or at least reduce the dose, working with your licensed healthcare provider, of course, uh, of uh, metformin as the uh, body weight reducing and blood glucose controlling effects of semaglutide would overwhelm any uh, uh, effect from metformin. So you wouldn't have to worry about any a loss in terms of blood sugar or weight control of the metformin while you're on semaglutide. But metformin may be helpful in terms of maintaining a metabolic health and weight after a uh, or in between uh, 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 cycles, if you will, of uh, semaglutide. So those are my uh, really more driven by personal thoughts and wrapped into the professional experience and the 20,000 hours of clinical experience I've had leading multidisciplinary care metabolic health uh, and weight management programs, including GLP-1 drug uh, experience since 2006. Again, by all means, if you like this video, please click like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be putting out videos as I can. And uh, don't uh, hesitate to share if the spirit moves you. All right, take care.